The Massachusetts Department of Public Health's Bureau of Environmental Health is charged with ensuring a safe and wholesome food supply in the Commonwealth. When there are reports of a foodborne illness, the MDPH Working Group on Foodborne Illness Control works with public health and restaurants or facilities to find the source of the contaminated food or drink. Local Board of Health staff or public health nurses visit the sites that have been identified as the potential source of the outbreak to guide management and employees through the process of collecting stool samples. They also conduct staff interviews and inspections to confirm the source of the illness, and they serve as a point of contact for the staff, often collecting the stool sampling canisters for transport to the lab. The MDPH Working Group on Foodborne Illness Control works with local public health to provide clear and easy instructions for collecting a stool sample. You're watching this video because we need your help to investigate a foodborne illness outbreak. It is important for management and employees to understand that testing for foodborne pathogens in a timely fashion will help to identify and contain the illness outbreak. The public health agent will explain the collection process and give you a time frame for returning the sample. The goal of the video is to help you provide valid samples for laboratory testing. If you work in a restaurant or handle food, you may be asked to collect a stool sample for testing. This test of the stool will show if you have a bacteria or a virus that is making you or others sick. Following the four steps outlined in this video will guide you in collecting a useful stool sample for the laboratory and prevent the spread of foodborne illness. Begin by looking at the supplies in the canister provided. Each kit includes a small canister or container, a sample form to fill out, a sample bottle called a parapack container with a sampling spoon attached to the lid and a sheet of instructions. Step 1. Fill out the form. Print your name, date of birth, and address very clearly. Also make sure to include the date that you collected the sample. If you have any symptoms, fill in when they began. Then print your name and date of birth on the label of the sample bottle. It's important to write your name and information the same way on both the form and bottle. The lab will not accept your sample unless the names match identically and you have filled out all the information completely. Step two, prep. First, be sure to wash your hands thoroughly with warm water and soap before you start. If you need to urinate, do so before collecting your sample. Urine should not be mixed with the stool. If you have loose or watery stools, Talk to the local public health nurse about how to collect a sample. Next, lift the toilet seat and place plastic wrap around the brim of the toilet. If the plastic wrap does not stick to the toilet, use tape to secure it. Now, make a small dip in the plastic so there is a place for the stool to collect. Make sure the toilet seat is down and poop onto the plastic wrap. Step three, collection. Begin by using the spoon attached to the lid of the sample bottle to collect a piece of the stool. The sample should be no larger than the size of a dime and should not go past the red line on the bottle. This also applies to watery stools. Place the sample into the bottle and secure the lid tightly. Make sure there aren't any leaks or overflows or you'll have to submit another sample. Keep the sample at room temperature do not refrigerate it unless the nurse tells you otherwise. And don't forget to dispose of the plastic wrap in a proper receptacle. Finally, wash your hands again thoroughly with warm water and soap to avoid getting sick and to prevent the spread of bacteria or virus. Step four, return the sample. Place the sample bottle in the canister along with the completed form. Return the canister to your facility manager or a person designated to collect it. You should deliver the sample as soon as possible to make sure it can be used. The laboratory staff will open the canisters and test your stool to look for any evidence of foodborne pathogens that might have caused the outbreak. If your test results are positive, you may be required to collect more stool samples. This is to make sure you are healthy when you handle food. It's important to avoid some common mistakes when collecting your stool sample, so you won't have to repeat the process. 
Make sure your name and date of birth are identical on the canister label and the paperwork. Also, don't provide too much sample or wait too long to submit your sample. And finally, if you are taking antibiotics, you cannot submit a sample until 48 hours after your last dose. Following these four steps will help ensure that you have collected your stool sample properly. The results will help state and local public health officials keep both you and the public safe and healthy. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact your local health department.